Hi, my name is Brett Statham. In this quick video, I'd like to show you how to create custom tables in a SQL Azure database and then connect up to them from a Windows Azure mobile service. So first, for the demo, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new Windows Azure mobile service. So I'll click New, Compute, Mobile Service, and Create. And I'm just going to call this WAMS Custom Table. How about that? Verify that name's available. Looks good. Um, you now, you could, of course, use an existing mobile service. I'm just demoing, so I'm creating a new one here. You could also use an existing SQL database, but I'm going to create a new database for this. Pick the subscription. I'm out in San Diego, so I'll pick the West U.S. region. Now, it's going to come up with a new database name. That sounds good to me, so I'll leave it. But I am going to put it on a server that I know. You could also go create a new SQL Azure server instance if you wanted to. Uh, but I'll pick the one I know and that I know the administrative credentials for. And just say OK. So now with Windows Azure Mobile Services, uh, it's going to uh, create for you a Node.js back or Node.js backed set of services uh, that expose a RESTful API uh, that sit on top of the SQL Azure database on the back end. So right now it's going through the process and creating all of those for us. We'll give that a minute to complete. All right, that eventually completed here. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate into this new Windows Azure mobile service that just got created. And if I go to the data tab, uh, you'll see that I don't currently have any tables in the Azure mobile service. Now, you could create them here, uh, or in my case, I want to go to SQL Management Studio and create them there, uh, either using uh, the GUI or just running some scripts, and then wire them back up into Windows Azure mobile services. So I'm going to open up SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to go ahead and connect up to that SQL Azure uh, database instance using its fully qualified name and the credentials that I have for it. And under databases, I should be able to expand that and see the new WAMS custom tables DB that just got created. However, I see that there's no user tables in that database, and I want to create those using a script. So I'm going to go pull open an existing script file, and it's going to connect me up to that same server and put me into the WAMS custom tables DB here. Now, the one thing that I want to make sure of is that when Windows Azure Mobile uh, Services uses or creates tables, it creates them in a SQL Azure database schema that has the same name as the WAM service itself. So I'm going to copy the WAM service name into my clipboard. And back over here in Windows Azure Mobile Services, I need to replace any DBO references with that schema name. So I'm just going to do a Control H to do a, a search and replace. And I'll play or paste in uh, my Windows Azure Mobile Service name for the schema and just do a replace all. All right, found 125 occurrences. That looks good. And uh, go ahead and say OK. All right, so uh, those are all there. Now, a couple other quick comments on the tables that you create. First of all, their primary key column has to be called ID. So uh, in Northwind, uh, for example, the category table would have had a category ID column. I renamed that to ID. Same thing down here in my products table. It has an ID column, which is the, the primary key column out there. Um, so that's one uh, thing there. The, another one would be a best practice. So the ID column name is a requirement. The other uh, best practice, though, would be to have your table names be singular. So instead of categories, it's category. Uh, and the reason why is that when you create a class, on the client side uh, to match up to that table, it, it has to have the same name as the table. And you'd want a class called category. You wouldn't want a class called categories to represent a single category uh, back there. So just a couple of uh, comments there on those. Uh, but otherwise, I'm good to go. I'm in the right database. Uh, at the very end of my script, so this creates the category and product table, populates them with data, and then down here at the very end, even creates a view called product catalog uh, that queries them. And then I use that as a test uh, to go in and query from that product catalog view to make sure that the data got loaded. Okay, so let me run that. Oh, I had some text highlighted there. Try that again. Run it. All right, and I see some data coming back, so it looks good. If I come over here to my tables uh, and refresh that, I can now see the category and product table. And in fact, that view for product catalog got created in there as well. There it is. All right, so let me return to Windows Azure Mobile Services. And if I went back to the data page, it still wouldn't see those tables. I have to still add them from Windows Azure Mobile Services so that the RESTful API layers and all that stuff get built. So I'm going to add a table here. Uh, now, in this case, you don't want to schema qualify it. It knows that they have to be in that WAMS custom table schema. You just want to give them the table name. and Make sure to type the same table name that you created uh, back over in the database itself. 
set the permissions if you wish or come back and set them later. I'm going to leave them at the default and just say OK. And so now it really sort of just creates all the metadata and wires up to that table on the back end. And in fact, you can see it found the two indexes and eight records. Let me go ahead and create another, another one there for product. Again, leave the permissions and say OK. And uh, in category, I'm actually going to navigate into that. And I should be able to browse the records. And in fact, I see all the columns and there's all the data that got loaded in from that script. And if I go back here and click on product, uh, sees three indexes and 77 rows. And if I browse it, I can see all the product data. Pretty cool. Now, you might remember that my script actually did also have a view. And in a separate video, I'll show you how you can create custom objects like views and procedures and still query them from your Windows Azure mobile services. Anyhow, I hope this helped.